again this is monkey 1000 and today i got a parcel in the mail yesterday but i was doing my timu stuff so i wasn't able to open it up so we're going to do it today and i'm going to um, do a review and we're going to use this so i was asked to do this by a lady that um Shea Bear and i have worked for before and she um, I don't need to do a video, but I'm doing a video on it. Um, but I just need to do a review for her. And that's it. So, um, they give you, you buy it off of Amazon. And then they put your money back into PayPal. And then you just do a review. So, that's it. So, but I want to do a video because I want people to know about it but better. So, anyways, I'm going to open this up. This is by Amarku, Marku, let food become culinary arts, that's what it says. I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, it's heavy. <laughs> there you go, so you can see. I'm going to open this up. We're going to see how well it, it, it what it is, and uh, yeah, Ooh, I know what it is, but um, yeah. Ooh, this is going to be nice. This is a Dutch oven. Wow, this is really ooh, heavy, heavy. Nice, nice. It comes with a pamphlet here. Emar, Emar Q, Emerald Cast Iron Dutch Oven. And there's the picture right there for y'all. And let's see. Oh. Okay. The red it has red, blue, and orange as the colors that come in. And cool. It's a 3.5 quart. It's neat. Very nice. General cooking tips it gives you. And a user and care guide. It'll tell you how to clean it. And also as um, worn, worn. Never put cold water into hot cold cookware. No, never. Okay, cool. Let's take this out and see some more. Get rid of the box. This is a nice box though. <laughs> Very nice. Wow. And here we go. Okay, nothing else in there. So I don't want to mess anything, just in case. You can have the plastic here, it gives you a little thing. You can throw that out. Um, this is very nice. I have the red. And there's the emblem on the back, on the bottom. This is quite nice. Very heavy, but it's cast iron. It will be. And there's the lid. So you can see it. I want to make sure you're seeing it because I had somebody with my team who said that they could not see the uh, stuff, the, the small stuff. So I want to make sure you guys, that's the inside of it. Very, very nice. Ooh, pretty, pretty. That's it together. Very cool. Very, very cool. And uh, let's see. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm sorry. Okay, so it's a 3.5 quart that I got, and it is $79.99 off of Amazon. That's where we got it, it's from Amazon. And um, yeah. If you want the bigger one, it's a five quart and it's $99.99. And they're both in stock and they come in orange, blue, and red in both of the quarts. So that's okay, cool. It's non-stick. It's a uh, emerald cast iron Dutch oven pot with a lid for braising, bread baking, roast turkey, frying, oven safe up to 550 degrees. And it's easy to clean so very very nice so 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean this out and wash it up a little bit. And then I'm going to do a recipe in this. So um, we're going to make goulash in it. That's what we're going to do. Um, so we're going to do that today and see how well it works. Yeah, pretty cool. I'm just looking on it. There it is on Amazon right there for you. So you guys can see it. Okay. So I'm going to get this cleaned up and follow the directions for the cleaning part. I'm probably just, you know, don't have to do too much because I don't have anything in it. I just want to use soap and warm water and, you know, use a sponge on it. This is apply a very thin, even layer of cooking oil to the Dutch oven pot inside and out. For your first time use, you, you scrub the Dutch, Dutch oven for, let me, let me do this over. Okay, the first step, you scrub it, okay, and then you use warm and soapy water, dry with a clean cloth. Then you apply a very thin layer of cooking oil to the Dutch oven pot inside and out. Put the oil coated Dutch oven on the stove and heat it on a small fire to dry. Repeat step two, heat it on a small fire to dry, turn off the fire after cooling and wipe off excess oil with a kitchen paper towel, place in a ventilated area. Cool. And then it just gives you general cooking tips here. And um, after you use it, cleaning stuff, and um, it'll, it'll talk about other worn stuff. Like don't stack anything on top. Never store the pot in a still damp area. Um, do not leave the pot unattended during use. Uh, avoid using metal um, utensils with it. So you don't scratch it or anything. Always use a wooden or a nylon or plastic or silicone. Um, never put cold water into hot co cookware. Sudden uh, thermal shock may result in cracking or loss of enamel. So you don't want to do that. Ooh, this is going to be fun. I never had a red pot before. You know that? Never. Never had a red pot. I'm very plain Jane, I guess. This will brighten up my kitchen a little bit. I don't know. So I'm going to do what it says to get it going and then when I'm ready to do the cooking part we'll we'll be back. Okay guys, so I washed it with soap and that and I dried it off with a clean cloth. So we got it here. And what we're gonna do now, we're gonna put some oil in it. it doesn't say how much, just uh detected at your front door. Shaver's outside, sorry guys, but my alarm goes off when he walks back and forth. Uh, you put the oil coated Dutch oven on the stove and heat it on a small fire to dry. Repeats you have to do it twice. Does not say how much to put in here. But it says to put it on, apply a very thin layer. So I'm going to get a um, a paper towel, and I'm going to put it, put it on the paper towel. And then we'll smear it on the inside and out. That's what it says to do. So we're going to do this. And I'm going to pour it all in here. Oh, let's do the oil because it doesn't say anything about olive oil, but it just says oil. So we'll use the oil. So I'm just going to put some on a paper towel and I'm just going to wipe around it. And it says to do the inside and outside. So that's what we're going to do. And just a thin layer. That's all you're doing. And put it on the outside. Okay. And I guess you do the bottom too. Is that all right there? Okay. And we'll get that. I'm going to get the lid.
It also says never put this on high heat. You may crack it. Always put it on low or medium when you're cooking. So, I'm gonna do the lid. I have the lid right here. Here's the lid, so you guys can see. It's pretty cool. So I'm gonna put some on here. And we'll do the inside. Sure you get everything. That's what it says. Mm, I always do everything. Okay. Cool. Okay. Then you're gonna turn it on for medium heat or low heat. I'm gonna put it on low heat for this, I think. And then when it dries, we'll do it again. You do it twice. So, put it there on low heat. And we'll let it do its thing. And then we'll come back and I'll do it again. did my thing I did it twice so we're good I can touch it I mean it's still warm but we're gonna cook in it so we can get dinner going here um, we're gonna do the ground beef and cook it first so I'm gonna make the ground beef in here and plop it in here um, that's what I'm gonna do here okay in here first. Get it going. This will be fun to do, I think. Okay. It says a pound. That's all you're going to need is a pound. So That's all I'm going to put in here. I got two pounds here, so I'm going to put it away and I will come back. Okay guys, so I put the meat in here, I'm going to turn it on, we're going to put it on a floor, you're going to keep it on low heat or to medium heat, and I'm going to turn it on high. So we're going to put it in here, i got the meat going, we're going to get this all done. So while I'm waiting for this meat, and I'm going to go over what you need, you'll need two tablespoons of extra villain vinegar vinegar virgin olive oil oh my god one medium yellow onion chopped you're going to have two cloves garlic minced one pound of ground beef you can use salt freshly ground pepper you're going to need you're going to need one ta tablespoon of tomato paste you'll need one and one fourth of low sodium beef broth You'll need one ounce of canned tomato sauce, which is 15 ounces. Now mine are bigger. They're bigger than 15 ounces here. <laughs> so, uh, I don't know if I got one in, the, in there that I might already have. I, I'll check and see if I got some that's 15 ounce. And then um, you'll need a diced tomatoes that are 15 ounce, one can. You need one tablespoon of Italian seasoning, one teaspoon of paprika, 
one and one fourth elbow macaroni uncooked and one cup of shredded cheddar cheese you can put um, freshly chopped parsley or garnet for garnish if you like I'm not going to and the first step you're going to do here is you're going to heat up your meat and um, I'm going to do the meat first and then we'll drain it and then we'll put it back in the pot and then we'll start everything else okay so I'll be back when the meat is drained and ready Okay guys, I'm going to take it off the stove, and there you go, you want it just after it gets, the pink is gone, and you want to take it off, you want to drain it, and then we'll come back. Okay guys, so now we've got the meat going, I'm going to put the garlic in, I've already minced it, use two cloves. And you're going to put your onion in, which I already did my dicing on it. Okay. Use a medium onion. Okay. I'm just going to mix it all up. Mix it up well. Especially use a whole medium onion of the yellow onion, that's what you're gonna use. Okay. Let it cook for a few minutes. About a, about a minute. You can add your salt and pepper in. Uh, let me see how much pepper and salt it wants. It doesn't really say. It's, it's basically to your taste. So, I have to be careful with salt with my mom. So I'll just, I'll just put a, a little bit in there. Pepper, it don't matter, I can just pepper away. But the salt I have to really be careful with. Because she's a, you're also going to put um, the uh, beef broth in there, so that has salt in it too. So you don't want to put a bunch of salt in there, It'd be too salty. Just mix it up. I'm going to put my ground pepper in there. I'm just going to do a couple of turns and put in there. Hopefully you guys can see some of this. And I'll show you. There we go. There you go. That's what it looks like. Okay. Good. It's hot. I'm going to put some more pepper in here. I love pepper. It doesn't say how much, just put as, as much as you like for yourself. That's what I would do. Okay. Okay. I'm going to put you up a little higher, so I'll be right back. Okay, guys, this should be a lot better having you up more. So I kind of. So now, let's see what you got to do here. Okay. You're going to add the tomato paste, which is going to be the tomato paste. Let me see. It's going to be one tablespoon. One tablespoon. 
so it does the tomato taste. So I've got to open the can up. So I'm um, over here opening up cans here. <coughs> I wish I kind of made these a little smaller, but I don't know when I'll need it again, you know? But that's okay. I just strain this up while I'm waiting. Okay. I'm going to put a little bit more pepper in here. <laughs> Tablespoon. Okay. Add a little bit more. You can be a little bit. No, add a little bit more. Because um, I got. I used up all the hamburger. It wasn't going to be enough for us, so. Um, but yeah, it's not going to be enough, so I'm going to make sure that I have enough for us. So. And you can stir that in. So we're going to stir this in. And then we're going to do the, we're going to open up the, um, to put stir to coat then pour in both tomato sauce and diced tomatoes so I'm gonna open these up and I'll come back okay guys so now we're going to put in the um, crushed tomatoes now I have I put 15 ounce in it and a in a cup I wanted to make sure I had the right amount and because I have a bigger can so, and then you're going to use you're going to, you're going to use 15 ounce of the diced tomatoes, and you're going to put them all in here into your pot, just like so. Then we're going to mix it all up really good. Hopefully you guys can see all that. Yeah. Okay. Got a fly flying around. I hate them. Bruno don't like them either. He hates flies. This looks really good. It smells good. Okay, so after we do that, we are going to we're going to put the paprika in. And you're going to use we're going to use the Italian seasoning. See how much we got to use on that. Hold on just a moment. Hopefully you guys can hear me because the mic's all way in the front. So let me see how much paprika. Um, one tea, one teaspoon of paprika, and the same with the uh, Italian um, garlic. So I'm looking for my one teaspoon got. Okay. I'm sorry guys. And I got my paprika here. And you can do it to your taste. I'm gonna add a little bit more. I like paprika, it's good for you too. So just add a little bit more. But it's up to you. And what you guys want to put in there for your taste and what you like. 
And you do the same for the Italian seasoning, which I have right here. So, and we're just going to sprinkle it all in there. Put a little bit more in here. Kind of sprinkle it on top like that. And then we're going to stir it up for a minute. And we're going to stir this up, mix it up a little bit. This looks good. I don't even have the macaroni in there yet. Eh. So. Okay. Okay, so we got those two down. Put things away as I go. I'm one of those that like to put their stuff away as I do my thing. If I can. Makes life neater and easier. Okay, so let me see here what we gotta do. Um, and then you're gonna stir in the macaroni. So let's see how much macaroni we need. It says for macaroni you're going to need one and one half cups. One and a half. One and one half cup of of macaroni. But I'm going to use a little bit more than that because I doubled the meat. So I'm going to go a little bit more than that. Because <clears throat> there's three of us. There's not two. So, you know, if you if you do two, then that will be enough for you guys. You know, for, for two people. One. And there's a half. Fire was going fast when it drove by. One and a half. Okay. I'm going to stir this up first. <coughs> Excuse me, my cough. I think this is going to be really good. Okay, so I'm going to add a little bit more. And I'm going to maybe add another cup. Because, you know, I like the macaroni here. <coughs> but that's for me, okay? So it's up to you. You guys can go with the recipe and just stick with the recipe. Or you can add extra if you like. I mean, I added extra meat because one pound of meat to me for us is not enough. So I ended up having two pounds. So that's why I kind of put everything a little bit more. And that will be good. Okay, so now what are we going to do now? Okay, you're going to stir in the macaroni like I did and bring it to a simmer and, and, and cook. Stir occasionally until pasta is tender for about 15 minutes. Oops, we forgot something. <laughs> I knew, I was wondering. I got to put the broth in. Yes, yeah, a good thing I remembered. So the broth is going to be how much broth? I'm reading, sorry. <coughs> one and one fourth of broth you're going to need. And this is the broth I got. So you guys can see that hopefully. And um, yeah, you want to use beef broth. Okay, I'm going to rinse out my cup and I'll be right back. Okay, oh, I'm not quite there yet. I'm trying to pour it in here. I just rinsed it out. So. The cup right there. And okay. Okay, there we go. And we're gonna pour this broth in there. Oh, that looks good. Really looks nice, doesn't it? 
this is goulash. My mom has made it before. Um, yeah. I think I'll add a little bit more broth in here only because I have all that meat in there. And I want to make sure. I'm not going to double it completely, but I want to make sure there's enough in there. I think there is. <clears throat> it looks like it. Looks fine. I mean, you know, I think I'll be fine. Okay, so now what you're going to do is let it simmer for 15 minutes. I'm going to put the timer on, I'm going to put the lid on, let it simmer, and then we'll come back. Stirring it up real well. That looks so good. I'm hungry. I'm ready to eat. Okay, you're going to do it for about 15 minutes with the lid on it. Let me get my lid. Sorry, guys. Let me cr cross you there. I'm going to put the lid on here. And we're going to, I put it on a four. <clears throat> and we're going to put 15 minutes on the clock. Hopefully, you guys can see this. There we go. I think you're fine. Don't need to look at my belly. There we go. So, I'm going to put it on 50 minutes and let it rip. Do its thing. I'm going to put some of this stuff away. And then we'll be back. Okay, guys. 15 minutes is up. Turn that off. And we're going to get our shredded cheese here. And you're going to use a cup of cheese. Though. A shredded cheese. Um, you could use more if you want. You know, if you like a lot of cheese. Some people do. They love cheese. They like more. But it calls for a cup of cheese. So I want you guys to know that. I am using mild cheddar cheese in the bag if I can open it up. So. Then you're going to put it in there. Okay, I have a brand new bag, so it takes a little bit here to get everything going. Okay, and I'm going to put my cheese in here. And my cup. Okay, as you can see, there we go. Alright, I'm going to open this up. It looks really good. Sometimes you might need to let the uh, macaroni um, cook a little longer, but it said pretty much 15 minutes or until tender. Yeah, we're good here. Good. Mm. So I'm going to put my cheese in. I'm going to add probably a little bit more because we like cheese. And you're going to mix the cheese into it. So just mix it in. I'm going to put a little bit more cheese in there so it's nice and cheesy. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. It does smell good. So, trying to get it out of this bag. And not easy to do. Got it all over the place. Yep. I'll put a little bit more in there. There we go. So like I say, do it to your liking, your, your taste. If you like a lot of cheese, then put it in there. You don't have to follow the recipe right to a T. Um, you know, that's your basis. So it depends how many people you have and how big your casserole dish is too. <laughs> um, this is going to be fine for us. For the three of us. Be, this this is a nice size. It'll be fine. But if you have like a huge family, you're going to need the bigger one, I believe. I'm going to sit it down for just a few minutes and let it do its thing for a few more minutes. And then we'll come back and taste it. Okay, guys. I let it sit for a few more minutes because um, 
I had one of the noodles and it was just a little tad um, hard. It wasn't real soft like it should be. So there you go. That's what it looks like. It's time to turn it off. And we are going to do a little taste here. As you can see, this is how it looks. It's very simple. For someone who's not a big cook, this is very easy to make. <coughs> I can't really make too much of a mistake. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, yeah, you, it looks great. It looks fabulous. So I'm going to eat. Try it. Mm. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move this up a little bit for you. Oh, there you go. There I am. <laughs> yeah, very good. It is ready. Now remember to use wood, silicone, or plastic when you're using this. So I'm going to use this to dish it out on a plate. And I'm going to take it off this heat so it don't burn. Move it over a bit. I have it off, but it's still cooking because it's on the on the burner. So there we go. And I am going to go eat and feed the other two. And I hope you like the recipe. Very simple recipe, really. It wouldn't have took as long if... Um, you know, I didn't have to season the uh, Dutch oven because I got it and I just opened it up in front of you guys. But, you know, if you buy one, I would do the seasoning part one day and then, or early during the day before you have to cook for dinner. <laughs> then that way you don't have to um, wait as long for dinner. <laughs> so we have having a late dinner because of that. So that's what I'm trying to say. So, yep, there you go. I'm going to dish it out and let everybody eat. So, I hope you liked the video, and yep, monkey sushi out for now. Bye, y'all.